Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. Terraform's licensing change from MSL to BSL has created a lot of discussion in the DevOps community. Many people are still confused if they can use Terraform in their production environment, if they can use Terraform to build the infrastructure, is Terraform still going to be the same as they were using in the past? So I'm making this video to clear all the confusion that's in the air. Many misleading documents. There are many controversial statements that are available on the internet. How much are they correct? What is true about Terraform's licensing change and what is not true about the Terraform licensing change is something that we are going to discuss today. Before we start this video, you need to understand something about open source, right? You need to know how does an open source company or how does open source projects work? For example, Terraform has its complete code open on GitHub, but how Terraform pays or how HashiCorp, who is the owner of Terraform, pays their employees, right? So there might be so many open source contributions that are coming to Terraform. Similarly, there are so many open source contributions that come to Kubernetes, lot of projects in CNCF, but how exactly is HashiCorp paying Terraform? employees right so what happens is along with the open source model usually these companies have their subscription or premium uh, products as well for example terraform has something called as terraform cloud terraform is completely open but if you like terraform and if you want to use terraform in your enterprise by taking the support of hashicorp you can subscribe to terraform cloud and hashicorp will charge you for the terraform cloud similarly HashiCorp has certifications. If you do certifications, HashiCorp gets some kind of revenue from the certifications. HashiCorp conducts events. And if you buy tickets for those events, HashiCorp gets some revenue. And there are other places of funding, which is primary for our discussion today. Let's say I'm using Terraform. I'm using HashiCorp's products and I'm building my own company. What does that mean? So today I can copy the Terraform code I can build the Terraform code and I can rebrand it and I can sell it, right? So I can make some minute changes to Terraform's code or I can provide additional wrappers to the Terraform's code and I can call it Terraform XYZ, Abhishek's Terraform and I can sell it as a product when Terraform used to be MSL licensed, right? So I can create my own company that is based on Terraform or I can create a entire CICD product, for example, I can say that I'm building Abhishek CI CD product. And what is in that CI CD product? Basically, I can say that instead of downloading Terraform, downloading Ansible, and you know, integrating them separately, I am writing a new product where if you download my product, you will see a button called Terraform. Click on that, Terraform gets installed. There is a button called Ansible. Click on that, Ansible gets installed. Then there are some cool integrations in my product. Using the user interface, you can integrate Terraform with Ansible and there is some additional support. Let's say you get any issues with Terraform, you can log a support ticket and we will help you. So I can build these kind of solutions at this point when Terraform was using MSL and Terraform has no objections to it till then. Now the problem is that how much these companies are giving back to Terraform, right? Let's say I'm doing the thing that I mentioned. I'm creating a product that is based on Terraform or I'm creating a competitor to Terraform or I'm providing enterprise solution of Terraform to my customers. I am getting millions of dollars, but I'm not giving any back to the Terraform or I'm not giving anything back to the HashiCorp community. Isn't it unfair? So that's where Terraform has thought that, okay, so many people are using our products but they're not giving back to the community. So let's change the licensing model from MSL to BSL. This is what Terraform has mentioned. But how much is that true? Is it completely true that Terraform has shifted from MSL to BSL for this very own reason? Not really. This is one of the factor, but this is not the only factor. If you look at HashiCorp, Right? If you look at the revenue of HashiCorp or if you see what is happening with HashiCorp. So HashiCorp want to, like, you know, HashiCorp was never going into profits. So this is another reason why HashiCorp has taught that. Because Terraform, Vault 
and other products of Hashikar are doing really well in the market. Why don't we take or why don't we capture that market into the commercial space? And why don't we get money out of it? Right? So this is what HashiCorp has taught along with the other factors that I've told you. And HashiCorp has changed the licensing model from MSL to BSL. Now, what exactly is this BSL? Previously, when the licensing model was MSL, anybody can use Terraform and create their own products. They can provide Terraform as a product in their products, right? For example, like I told you, I can create a new company or I can create a new product called Abhishek's CICD. And inside that, I can just take Terraform and put Terraform in that. I can provide Terraform as a product to my customers. And Terraform has no objections to it. But once this licensing model is changed to MSL, now there are two primary things. One is you cannot create a competitor of Terraform. That means you cannot simply download the Terraform code, make some minute changes or make some big changes and resell that product. You can call it Terraform XYZ. You can sell it, but using BSL, it's not possible. Second thing is you cannot take Terraform and you cannot embed Terraform into your product. Again, the same example, like I told you, if I create DevOps CICD Abhishek company inside that product, I cannot use Terraform as is like I cannot just take Terraform and provide that as a product to my customers. But what is the most popular use case of Terraform? The most popular use case of Terraform is that as end users, as DevOps engineers in our company, as infrastructure engineers in the company, we use Terraform to create infrastructure, right? Let's say my company is using AWS. I use Terraform to create infrastructure on AWS. I use Terraform to create infrastructure on Azure. I use Terraform to create infrastructure on GCP. Now, this is not impacted in your BSL model. So the most popular usage of Terraform is still not impacted. I'm talking about the licensing model as of today. I'm not sure what Terraform is going to do in the future. What is going to be additional licensing changes or what is the HashiCorp's road path is something that I'm not aware. But at this point of time, the end users who are using Terraform to create infrastructure for their company are not impacted. And this is the most popular use case of Terraform. However, the DevOps as service companies I don't want to take the name of the companies because it might get controversial. So please try to understand that any company that uses Terraform and that provides Terraform as a product to their to their employees or they use Terraform, modify the source code of Terraform and sell Terraform in any other form. They are subjected to this BSL license and they need to pay back to Terraform if they want to continue it. Now, BSL license does not mean that you cannot create commercial product on Terraform. But if you are doing in if you are doing that, you need to talk to HashiCorp. You need to get approval from them and you have to give back to them. That means whatever the revenue that you are generating or, you know, any legal uh, communication between you and Terraform has to be taken place and you have to contribute back to Terraform. So this is the exact licensing change from MSL to BSL. Now, BSL license has been there from years. There are many companies like MongoDB, MariaDB, all of them use BSL license. It's not that Terraform is the first one to make this shift. Even MongoDB did, did that. Uh, it also changed from uh, MSL license to uh, BSL. So it is like hap it happened in the past and Terraform is not the first one. But what is more concerning is that Terraform had a lot of contributions. There are many people in the community that had contributed to Terraform because Terraform was purely open source. Now let's take example. So there is a company called Terragrant. So what Terragrant did was because Terraform was open source, it heavily contributed back to Terraform and it created its own product on top of Terraform. Now assume if Terraform was not purely open source, had Terragrant done it, had Terragrant put all their efforts in contributing to Terraform and making it a better product that is today? Absolutely not. So being purely open source and being a product with BSL license is completely different. So Terraform is not purely open source at this point of time. Previously, it was 
when terraform had msl license now terraform is not purely open source but as end users you are not impacted still the companies who are using terraform to create infrastructure can use it without any questions and without any doubts as of today you can also read the bsl license so the bsl license is available on the internet you can go to terraform's page you can read terraform blogs uh, blogs and you can also ask questions to terraform so right now this is the current update at this point of time this is the status and in future if there are any changes i'll definitely let you know but for now don't worry terraform is going to be the popular tool at least for a while there are alternatives like crossplane crossplane is picking up and i have made videos on crossplane explaining why i like crossplane what are the advantages of crossplane over terraform what how crossplane fits into the gitops model so you can also watch that videos and you can see the alternatives of terraform and how they are growing and don't be confused with lot of misleading information that is available go through the official documentations read the official hashicorp blog read the vworks blog read the any company vendor who is actually using terraform read their official blogs and try to get the information from there i hope you found the video informative thank you so much for watching it and if you have any questions please let me know in the comment section take care everyone bye